Lewis dot structures or electron dot structures and how to make um, covalent bond Lewis dot structures also known as electron dot structures only show the valence electrons so let me just circle back they only show the valence electrons so you look at the periodic table and chlorine is right down here in the bottom right hand corner there's chlorine and uh, a little bit bigger view of that it looks something like this it says it's got 17 protons that's the atomic number and it's got 35 for an atomic mass and um, so if 35 let's round this up to 35 let's assume that's the most common isotope so 35 minus 17 would have eight or uh, yeah 18 neutrons but what we really care about is the number of protons and the number of electrons and usually the 17 is going to be both the number of protons p pluses and electrons not together but there's going to be 17 protons 17 electrons so we draw Bohr models and they look something like this this one so we should say 17 p pluses we usually put a plus there for protons 18 n zeros we usually put a zero there to show that they have a charge of zero and we start filling in our electrons two in the first shell eight in the second shell and then seven in the last shell so this would like to have another electron right there if it could it only has seven in the valence shell this is called the Lewis structure. It only shows the valence electrons, the electrons in the outer shell. So if you go back up to this, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5, those are the valence electrons right there. There are seven of them. So for C, we write Cl, and then we put seven electrons around it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is boron. It has five electrons grand total. We put two electrons in the first shell, and this thing isn't working now. Two electrons in the first shell, three in the second shell. Here's how you draw the electron dot structure, or I'm sorry, the Lewis dot structure. You write down B and you put in one, two, three electrons. And and the purpose over here is to show you that you can put the, the electrons anywhere you want to. K is potassium. It has one valence electron. You can show the electron on top, on the bottom, on the right, or on the left. And sometimes there's reasons for putting it in one place or another. Okay, uh, sample problems. Write the electron dot structures for these atoms, ions. Let's do a few of them. Uh, we, all, we already did K up here, so K should be right here, I think, right? Look at your periodic table, and it should have one electron. But, uh, and then CA, let's do a couple more. CA, that's got two, so you write down CA for calcium, and then show one, two electrons. Let's do one more. Sulfur, I think it's right down there. Sulfur, it has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one way to figure this out is you go one, two, skip the D's, three, four, five, six, six valence electrons. Now let's take a look at the ions. And this is a little bit trickier, but we have talked about this a little bit before. For example, K is potassium. That is this one right here, but we're going to make it into an ion, a cation. And to get to be a cation, you have to take electrons and throw them away. So, <clears throat> all right, so the electrons, they look like this, you know, in class we show this. So throw away an electron. Well, if you throw away an electron, K, which was right here, has one electron, you throw it away, you think, oh, it doesn't have any valence electrons. But actually what you should do is you should draw it like this, K, and make a plus charge. Now underneath that one electron is a whole other shell, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you should understand that actually potassium has a full outer shell right now with a charge of plus one. So let's take a look at sulfur. We're going to draw sulfur when it becomes an anion, a negative two charge. Here it is to begin with. You might recall that it has six electrons in the outer shell. To get a negative two charge, it must gain two of these. So if it had six and it gains two negatives, it now has a um, so it has a negative two charge. You'd write down minus two, and let's see, we had one already. We have two, three, four, five, six. Let's draw in two more. One, two more electrons. It has eight right now. And that's sulfur with a negative two charge. Let's go on. All right. Covalent bonds and Lewis dot structures. So there's this thing called the octet rule. And octet means eight. The octet rule, okay, it has to do with eight. They want a full valence shell, which is usually eight. Now remember the small atoms like helium and hydrogen, they like to have two electrons in the outer, in the outer shell, but usually it's eight. Noble gases don't play this game. They already have a full outer shell. They don't want to try to get an octet. They have an octet already. They have a full outer shell. But most of the other atoms will try to get a full outer shell by gaining electrons or losing electrons or sharing electrons. 
Well, let's talk about shared electrons. Shared electrons, you know already, those form covalent bonds. Now, how do they do that? They do that by forming ovale, uh, I'm sorry, overlapping, ah, overlapping orbitals, also known as bonds. So let's take a look down here at, at hydrogen. So here's hydrogen with its one electron. Here's another hydrogen with one electron. If we can take these boxes, which you know are called, I should call orbitals, there's one and there's one, and put it in the middle, like right here. Okay, put that orbital in the middle. Take those two electrons and put them in the orbital. Now it's a full orbital, it's, and it's a full outer shell. And so that's what makes hydrogen stable as with the formula H2, hydrogen gas. All right, if you would be so kind as to pause the video and write this down, that would be great because you're going to need this quite a, quite a bit. What this says is hydrogen makes one bond, almost always. Carbon likes to make four bonds. Nitrogen makes three, oxygen two, fluorine one. And helium is the trigger in this, that's the joker in this uh, in this deck, helium makes zero because it's a noble gas. All right, so we'll use this information on the next slide. If you look at the bottom right-hand corner, there's something that you could, you know, should sit back and stare at for a minute. Um, but it's really a topic that we'll discuss in AP chemistry. But uh, it turns out that when two atoms bond together, they, they make something called an anti-bonding orbital and a bonding orbital. And um, if the bonding orbital is full, like down here, there's two electrons. You can see the two arrows, so that's two electrons. It means it's a stable bond that's going to be formed. If there are anti-bonding electrons, probably they would be shown like this and like that. Um, that might lead to less stability or a different kind of situation. But again, this, you don't have to know a single thing about this for a test, but it wouldn't kill you to think about it. Next page. Let's just take a look at some examples of um, atoms that have full octets, and they got these octets by sharing electrons. Hydrogen has one electron it would like to have two. So if it donates one electron and carbon donates one electron, that's a shared pair of electrons. We often show that as a dash. And so hydrogen thinks it has two electrons in its outer shell, two valence electrons. It's a happy atom. And the same thing happens here. There's two electrons, and here there's two electrons, and here there's two electrons. All those hydrogens are happy. And carbon is too, because if you consider all of the valence electrons around carbon, there's two, four, six, eight. That's an octet. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht. October, the eighth month. Oh, wait a minute, that's the tenth month. I think it used to be the eighth, eighth month. Anyway, let's look over here. Uh, if you look at the previous page, how many bonds did fluorine want to make? It wanted to make one bond. So here's fluorine right here with one with seven electrons sharing another one. And now it's it's got a shared pair of electrons right here. That's a bond. It's a happy atom. Let me put a smiley face right there. Yes, that's a happy atom. And so is this fluorine over here. After it's sharing with silicon, it's got a full outer shell. Same thing with this one, same with the thing with that one. And then silicon, uh, it's getting kind of messy here, but silicon has a full octet as well. It started with four. So of course, silicon is on the periodic table. I just happen to have mine right here. Silicon is um, right here. Silicon has four valence electrons. It starts with four. And then it gets another one, another one, another one, and another one. It has eight. Here's NH3. It's called ammonia. They use it in Windex and window cleaners and lots of other things. Nitrogen starts off with five electrons in the outer shell. That's, that is to say five valence electrons. Look where it, where it is on the periodic table and figure that out. There's the five. But then it shares another one and another one and another one for eight. Let's look at a more complicated molecule. This one's called methanol. It's kind of like ethanol, like in you know, alcohol. It's in, this is not in beer. This is like wood alcohol from distilling wood. And it's poisonous, very poisonous. Um, anyway, its formula is CH3OH. And if you look at every one of these atoms here, they're all happy atoms. Hydrogen's happy with its two valence electrons. Oxygen's happy with its eight. It came to the party with six, and now it has eight by sharing this one and that one. Carbon came to the party with four. Now it's got eight. Hydrogen here has two valence electrons. Now, the equal sign right here, that's indicating that, well, this method on the left, it's a little bit busy with all those dots, so we just show the dots as, as uh, lines. Here's water. H2O is the formula. 
shared pair of electrons right there. That's a bit, that's a uh, covalent bond. Here's another covalent bond here. Next page. All right, <clears throat> multiple covalent bonds. It's really no different. It's just they're called double bonds or triple bonds. Double bond is two pairs of electrons. So if you look, you know, here between these two carbons, there's a pair of electrons right there, and there's another pair. So that's a double bond. And usually you show that as two sticks or two lines, like right here. Um, here's a molecule up here where carbon has one, two, three, four lines sticking out of it. That's eight electrons. That's a that's an octet. If you see this oxygen right here, you'll notice that hey man, they're not showing all the electrons. Shame on them. Right now it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight though, because we get lazy and we don't show all those electrons after a while. Triple bonds are no different. Three pairs of electrons, like right here. Three pairs of electrons making nitrogen happy. If you look at this at this um, structure right here, I guess I can't draw any farther over that way. Yes, I can. Okay, if, to get them all right there. Look at this. Each nitrogen has eight. Here's a fancy molecule down here, but every atom has a full valence shell. Um, some more examples here. Remember, you can get this on the pickup file. So on, remember to go to the pick P I C K U P pickup file and Everything you need is right here, like if you want to practice this a little bit. These are just some other atoms, some other molecules, I should say, all showing you know, um, bonding. Here's C3H8, one carbon, two carbons, three carbons with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogen atoms. Next page. Your book kind of goes crazy on this, and uh, your book has all of these... I can't get over that side. It has all these rules for how to make Lewis structures. And it's nice if you're having trouble right now, take a good look at this or, you know, kind of give this some thought. Because if you're um, drawing re really big and complicated molecules like this one in the upper right hand corner, perhaps you're going to want to follow all these directions. But typically, we just remember things like look down here, carbon. How many bonds does it like to make? Four. Hydrogen likes to make one. Iodine likes to make one. And after you practice this a little while, you'll be able to say, well, here's what this structure would look like. Uh, those are H's. <laughs> and then one, iodine. So I'm not showing any electrons except for the bonded electrons right there. But you should be able to look at this and identify all the, uh, all of the uh, electrons that would be there. Next page, and the last topic is called coordinate covalent bonding. It's just a special case of covalent bonding in which one atom donates both the electrons. Uh, this is my favorite example down here. This is called carbon monoxide. It's a poisonous gas. And uh, what's going on is carbon comes to the table with four electrons, valence electrons. One, two, one of these, and one of those. That's four. So it's got four valence electrons. It wants eight. So oxygen comes with one, two, three, four, five, six. Where the, where's the fifth and sixth one? These two right there used to belong just to oxygen. But oxygen is so kind, so sweet, so nice that it donates both of those electrons. So we show this as a line, but we also put a, an arrow on it right there to show that it's a coordinate covalent bond. It's really not any different from a regular bond except for one atom donates both of these. And that is everything that we were going to study today. <laughs>